Hey folks, hope y'all are doing well. I'm Karan Vandal from Econos Side, and in this video, let's talk about GDP growth and inflation projections for the G7 and BRICS countries. We'll also talk about who's leading in science and technology towards the end, and how is that relevant to India. We'll begin with the real GDP growth forecast for this year. Now, the global growth on average is projected to stay steady at 3.2%. According to these projections, a majority of the G7 and BRICS countries are slated to have slower growth rates this year compared to the last. But what is G7? What is BRICS? G7 is a grouping of countries. It started as the World Economic Summit in 1975 and by 1981, it fully came into force in its current form that has seven democracies as its members plus the European Union. You can see G7 is dominated by the Western countries. Whereas BRICS is a relatively new grouping. This block was founded as an informal club in 2009 by the four founding member countries. The goal was to provide a platform for its members to challenge a world order dominated by the United States and its Western allies. By 2023, BRICS has added quite a few member countries to the grouping with many more interested in becoming part of the group. Here's just one thing to note, Saudi Arabia, a crucial crude oil player, has been invited to join the BRICS group, but it has not yet accepted the invitation. Anyways, back to our GDP numbers. In G7, the United States will lead with a projected growth rate of above 2%, while the rest of the members expected to grow at anemic rates. A positive sign though, none of the G7 members are projected to be in recession this year. In BRICS, India is expected to lead with a projected growth rate of a touch below 7%. Only Brazil and South Africa are set to experience G7-like lower growth rates. Upon comparing the average projected growth rates for the two groups, we find that BRICS is expected to grow at more than three times the rate as the G7. Therefore, even though G7's combined GDP is around $15 trillion more than the BRICS nations, with continued higher growth of the BRICS and the potential to add more members, BRICS may overtake the G7 in economic size within two decades. A rather concerning part for the G7 is on the inflation front. Overall, global inflation is projected to come down this year by 100 basis points to below 6% on average. For the G7 group of nations, even when inflation has come down sharply, Italy, Germany and the United States are expected to experience an inflation between 2.5% and 3%, well above the long run target of 2%. In Europe, inflation is expected to average 3.3% across advanced economies. If you look at the key members of the BRICS, China, struggling under a real estate crisis, a manufacturing slowdown, and a weakness in consumer confidence, is forecast to experience a relatively benign price rise. Finally, India's inflation is expected to moderate to 4.5% in 2024, which is well within the target range of the Reserve Bank of India. But risks remain that could push global inflation higher. Number one, the geopolitical conflict in the Middle East and Red Sea could escalate, which would disrupt supply chains and raise energy prices. Then number two, wage growth across advanced nations was strong in 2023. Plus, American households had $290 billion in excess savings towards the end of 2023. These two factors could boost demand, putting an upward pressure on the prices. And number three, the rising housing cost in major economies could add fuel to the fire. All that to say, policymakers around the world will need to be prepared to deal with a second wave of price pressure if it materializes. In this global context, it appears India is in a fairly comfortable space. It is expected to grow at a higher rate than the other BRICS members and inflation is under control. We know there is an employment problem in India, but overall macro picture is better compared with the other major relevant economies. Having said that, the long-term growth prospect of a nation is heavily dependent on the productivity of its people. And technological breakthroughs or innovations are a good indicator of that. Think about 2023. 
The world experienced a new wave of science and technology innovations like artificial intelligence, a stunning growth of chat GPT, generative AI, etc. Where does India stand on this measure? To answer that, we can look at this map that explores the world's top 50 science and technology or SNT clusters, leading to innovations like the generative AI, chat GPT, etc. We can then see where Indian clusters rank on this scale. The methodology used to come up with this ranking is simple. It is based on the cluster's combined share of international patent applications and scientific publications, that is, the quantum and quality of research and development. So here are the key findings. Japan takes the top rank with the Tokyo Yokohama cluster that made up just over 10% of all patent applications between 2018 and 2022. The first American cluster on the list shows up at number 6, the San Francisco Bay Area cluster. This is home to major tech firms such as Adobe, eBay, Google, PayPal, etc. For the first time, China topped the list of countries with the highest number of clusters among the top 50, followed by the United States and then Germany. But in terms of research and development expenditure, the United States still leads the world, followed by China, Japan, Germany and the Republic of Korea. Again, where is India? India has only 4 clusters in the top 100, none of them in top 50. So while India's macro numbers look good, India needs to keep trying to up its game on research and development. Try to get at least one cluster in the top 50 in the next few years. In summary, growth rates for the major economies are moderating in 2024. Global inflation is trending down, though upward risks to inflation remain. India is in a relatively favorable position both in terms of GDP growth and price rise. But the longevity of this lead lies in India's ability to come up with world-leading innovations. As India has done well with capital expenditure on hard infrastructure in recent years, it needs to spend big to fortify its research infrastructure as well. I hope you found this analysis interesting. I'll speak with you again next week. Until then, take care.